Introducing Black Box Version 3, a major step forward for sequencing, songwriting, and arranging. There's a lot to cover in this video. Let's begin on the pad screen. To trigger a melodic or multi-sample pad, navigate to the configuration settings for the pad you want to trigger. Adjust the desired polyphony for the pad. Set the MIDI input to match your external controller. Send MIDI to the black box. You can use these same steps to trigger a granular pad at different pitches. There are two ways to trigger a slicer pad. If you send MIDI using the pad level MIDI input, your slices will be mapped chromatically starting at C2. You can trigger or sequence different slices using different pitches. Navigate to the MIDI tab on the Tools screen and set Global In to match your external controller. Send the corresponding MIDI pitch 36 to 51 to trigger the pads. Use the Slice Select or Slice Sequence parameter to control how you move through the available slices. You can also use Global In to trigger one-shot samples using the corresponding MIDI pitch. Samples will play at their original pitch unless adjusted or modulated in the pad settings. Use these same settings to trigger a granular pad at its original pitch. You can also use Global In and note numbers 36 to 51 to start or stop synced clips. Clips are also played at their original pitch. The first trigger starts the clip, the second trigger stops the clip. When you use the internal keys or grid keyboard, touch the grid selector in the upper left corner to choose the internal pad you wish to target. Touch the Seek button at the bottom of the grid pop-up to directly control the currently selected sequence. In this case, use the grid selector at the individual sequence level to set the target pad. Each of the 16 sequences now feature four layers. You can navigate layers by turning the lower right knob on the sequence home screen and touching the desired layer. When you are looking at the sequence piano roll, touch the layer select button in the top bar, then touch the desired layer. The current layer is displayed in the top bar when viewing the piano roll and the lower right corner of the sequence from the sequence home screen. From the sequence home screen, clear applies to all four layers. However, clear from the sequence edit menu applies only to the current layer. You may also notice a new option in the edit menu, double. Double will double the length and content of the current sequence layer. This allows you to write in shorter segments and extend only as needed. Pad sequences receive input from tapping the pad screen, MIDI input from global in from the tools menu, or tapping directly into the piano roll one step at a time. The grid selector in the upper left corner allows you to select or change the current sequence. You will notice a new label at the bottom of the grid pop-up to help remind you. Key sequences receive input from pad level MIDI input. The internal keys grid keyboard providing the sequence target is set to match the input pad, tapping directly into the piano roll one step at a time, or importing a MIDI file from the micro SD card. The upper left grid selector allows you to select the current sequence. The upper right grid selector allows you to select the target pad. You will notice a new label at the bottom of the grid pop-ups to help remind you. MIDI sequences receive input from MIDI Seek in the Tools menu, the internal keys grid keyboards, tapping directly into the piano roll one step at a time, or importing a MIDI file from the micro SD card. The grid selector in the upper left corner allows you to select or change the current sequence. You will notice a new label at the bottom of the grid pop-up 
to help remind you. All three sequence types feature MIDI output. Pads and keys will output MIDI on playback only. This allows you to layer external sounds with the internal pads. MIDI sequences will through and output MIDI during both recording and playback. The new song mode now features up to 32 scenes. Touch Song in the top bar to enable song mode. Each scene allows control over triggering sequences by layer and pads containing clips, slicers, one-shots, or granular samples. Press info one time to see the play count or repeats for each song scene. Keep mode lets you keep previously playing sequences or pads from the previous scene. This can be an easy way to allow a sample to play over several song scenes. Each preset features one song arrangement. However, you can loop while in song mode. You can loop an individual song scene or an entire song. Choose the loop mode from the button in the top bar. Scene triggers are new in version 3. Use MIDI note numbers 2 through 33 to trigger each scene individually. The transport will automatically start when the black box is in song mode and the triggered scene is available. Together with song loop modes, you have total control over how your song or scenes play back. You can send MIDI note number 34 to trigger the previous song scene, or send MIDI note number 35 to trigger the next song scene. The numbers to the right side of each scene indicates the length of the scene in bars and the number of repeats for that scene. New in version 3, on the main tab in Tools, you have Master Output Controls for outputs 1 through 3. From the MIDI tab, use Global In to select the channel for several controls like pad triggers, sequence triggers, MIDI record, song scenes, and MIDI program change receive. Use MIDI Seek to set the input channel for recording directly to a MIDI sequence. MIDI Out is a new parameter in version 3. When set to enabled, the internal sequencer will generate MIDI data that is sent out the TRS output. When you set this parameter to MIDI in through, all MIDI data coming in the TRS input will be sent through to the TRS MIDI output. The internal sequencer will not output via TRS in this mode. When you set MIDI out to USB device through, MIDI input from the USB device port will be sent through to the TRS MIDI output. The internal sequencer will not output via TRS in this mode. You can always sequence the internal pads and keys from the sequencer. USB device out is a parameter that allows you to control if any MIDI note data is sent over USB. This control can be helpful depending on the device connected to the USB device port. When enabled, MIDI note data is output via the USB device port. When disabled, no MIDI note data is output to the USB device port. On the clock tab in Tools, you will see two new parameters. These control how MIDI clock and transport controls are sent and received in the black box. This is especially helpful in more complex setups where you need explicit control over sync. Receive allows you to ignore all incoming clock and transport, listen to all incoming clock and transport, or respond only to TRS input or USB device input for clock and transport. Send allows you to send no MIDI clock and transport out of the black box. You can choose to send to both the TRS and USB ports, or send only to TRS or USB device output. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoy Black Box version 3. Make sure to hit subscribe to be notified when we publish new videos.